Oh, yeah. The sun also rises, huh? I mean, we're talking pure Hemingway, my stuff, huh? I mean, uh, I, I'm amazed, actually, at my uh, literary obscurity. Oops. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Tony Banana, he's uh, uh, wistfully witnesses my books disappear from the cardboard box. Hey, wait a minute. No money's going into his pocket? Uh, finally, he breaks down and waves to 500 rupee notes in my face. A lot of money. I want to buy your last two books. <laughs> I must be the most successful artist, writer in the history of Gaul. If Tony Banana himself is buying my books for like $40 cash, he doubles his money as soon as I leave the cafe. Earth freaks. Well, oh, this will give you an idea of how Earth People Tribe we are, uh, I give the books away to Tony Banana, the son of uh, Joe Banana. Robin Brown, author of uh, Deacon Masala, great book. Uh, David Tomery, author of A Season in Heaven. And I want to recommend his book. Uh, we talked a few times on the phone in Goa. Uh, a Season in Heaven. Uh, it's the perfect companion book to... Eight Finger Eddie, The Hippie History of Going Camp. Really teleport you. It's oral interviews of people who went overland from Istanbul to India and Kathmandu. Try to get that. That'll teleport you right into the scene. Yeah, David Tommy's book. Then uh, uh, Ingo, uh, he bought the rights of uh, the late Cleo's book, Gold Freaks. Uh, Vancouver Stewart, Amsterdam Ben, English Averill, French Jean, American Karen, Dean, Deidre, Walter, and his spunky Bengali wife, Tamali, on Lamakshi, luscious Indian bag. She's down from Osho's Opera, and she's got a free head. <laughs> Francis, the first native to rent a uh, house to hippies on Anjuna Beach. Yeah, Francis Rodriguez, huh? Uh, Georgette, uh, archivist of the late Golan hippie photographer, Dominique, then Camilo, thanks for the typewriter, Rebecca, Simon, French Bridget, Valerie, <laughs> yeah, and Eight Finger Eddie. Wow, okay, uh, migratory birds, you hear all about this pattern, so up they go again to uh, Nepal, this is like his sixth trip there, and what, third trip to Afghanistan, oh, uh, yeah, 1971, Eddie's growing up, huh? he's 47 now. Well, this golden winter, uh, the 1970-71 winter, on Anjuna Beach, winding down. Eddie goes down to the beach, alone with his radio. He sniffs the wind up the Arabian Sea. You know, he senses the humidity, scrutinizes the clouds, the action of the waves, color and texture of the sea and he understands like an old tracker time to head north to Kathmandu yeah uh -huh. well it's an arduous journey across India yeah he's up in the Himalayas again it's drizzling and uh, Valerie is Shakti uh, pesters him to seed help because uh, Eddie's uh, getting really sick, dangerously sick. Yeah, and uh, reluctantly he heads to Beer Hospital, 
and he's examined by a doctor who treats the French embassy staff. And uh, the doctor interprets his x-ray. Um, you have a severe case of tuberculosis, uh, perhaps lung cancer, and maybe six months to live. <laughs> well, Eddie self-medicates by dancing with the upper part of his body to Indian ragas while sitting in bed, listening to the radio. Look, the monsoon season in Kathmandu, dreary. <clears throat> Quite monotonous. Oh. And unpaved roads? Not a single paved road in the whole country. Oh. They're awash. You just slip sliding away to get anywhere. Through mud. <laughs> Medieval bacteria, rampant. We don't have any immunity to it either. Uh, those microbes, uh, when they look at us, they just like, yeah, fresh blood. Many of us are stricken down during the monsoon in the Himalayas.